So today I just wanted to give you a really quick tour of the small cabin that I lived in for four years while building our house over here. I actually lived in this cabin in three different locations. We moved this cabin two different times on the bed of a trailer. Um, had a crane pick it up and set it on the trailer, strapped it down and hauled it down the road about 12 miles one way. And a couple years later brought it back to the same general area when we bought this piece of land. And um, lived in it here for two winters, two years, while building the house here. So just want to give you a quick tour of the cabin. Uh, the interior, uh, the main part of the cabin is 11 by 15 feet. And Coincidentally, that's the same size cabin as the Dick Prinicky cabin up in Alaska, if you're familiar with that cabin. If you're not, you really should um, look up that name and look at some of the YouTube videos from a man named Dick Prinicky. Um, they were filmed back in the 60s and 70s, but um, they're on YouTube now. So um, again, 11 by 15 cabin plus the porch is about 5 feet deep, 11 feet wide. Um, this is a dry cabin, so I basically hauled water. Got a water storage tank inside, shower inside, a futon, which is couch slash bed. Um, had internet, television, and cell phone. So for power, I had a small off-grid solar power system. And it was 12 volts, had three 100 watt panels. Uh, solar charge controller, um, 12 volt deep cycle battery, and a thousand watt inverter. So with that I could power the television, uh, computer, that sort of thing, lights. Um, I had a backup generator that would run from time to time. So we'll just take a little walk around the cabin now. So I do have a video on building this cabin. So don't use the cabin very much right now. It's kind of a guest cabin. Um, right now my solar panels are not connected, but you can see the simple frame I have back here. So I could put an air conditioner unit in this window and I would do that in the summer when it was really hot and um, it actually worked pretty well. So inside behind this wall, there's a 30 gallon tank. So basically what I can do here is I'd haul water and I would pump water into one pipe and fill the tank. The other pipe is just an overflow so that I couldn't overflow inside the cabin. It would overflow out here. And that worked really well. I would haul the water in a 55 gallon buck drum and um, just use a transfer pump to pump the water in there. So we'll take a little walk inside the cabin now. So pretty basic, but actually was quite comfortable. Uh, one thing I would recommend too, if you're wanting a really simple, quick way to put up a ceiling without a lot of expense. So what I've got here is a canvas ceiling. So just rafters. And there's st uh, styrofoam insulation up in between the rafters. And then I just got some basic um, painter's tarp from Home Depot and use that thin canvas to cover the ceiling and then of course nail these strips of wood on. So it initially stapled the canvas to the rafters and then covered it with the strips of wood and that worked really well. It also lightens it up in here and, and makes it not quite so dark. So a really good way for a really quick inexpensive ceiling. 
And over time that material actually shrinks a little so it'll tighten itself up and makes for a much neater job. So I'll clean up just a bit here and do a little bit better tour of the cabin. Okay, now I'll show you the interior of this little cabin. So again, the dimensions of the cabin are 11 by 15. And um, basically here's how I had it set up when I lived in this cabin for four years. Had a little table and chair here. Had satellite internet and satellite television and cell phone. So I was able to pretty much connect to all three, no problems. Um, at the time I had a little dresser in this area. So over here is kind of the kitchenette area. I had a little propane camp stove here. Basically a blue water jug was my water supply for this sink. The sink would drain directly into a bucket. Just take the bucket out to, to empty that. Um, of course, I got the Yodel 602 wood stove here. Really good little wood stove for the cabin. It would really keep it nice and toasty in here. Even when it was 25 below out there, I could have it 85 degrees in the cabin if I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> so for sleeping arrangements, basically I have this little futon here. And so it doubles as a couch or you could sleep on it as is or you can flatten it out and sleep two people on it. So at the time, I also had a little closet here for clothing, and underneath was a little cubby area for a dog bed. So I actually had two dogs and a cat living in this cabin with me for those four years. So the shower, so this is, if you're gonna live off grid in a tiny cabin, if you wanna be comfortable, you're gonna need an indoor shower. The outhouse, that can be fine outside, no problem. You're gonna want indoor showers. So I wanna show you how I set this shower up. It's super simple. Um, really good for a real quick setup for an off-grid cabin. I initially had set it up as a temporary arrangement and it worked so well, I actually just left it that way. So basically I've got a little shower curtain here I'll take down so you can see how this is put together. Okay, so first step was cut a hole in the floor. Step two is to install this residential shower pan, just basically a fiberglass um, 32 inch by 32 inch shower pan. And next I did some really minimal framing and attached some leftover galvanized roofing to make a, an enclosure on two sides and then on the other two sides I put this shower curtain so behind the shower curtain and here so that's where I had my off-grid power system so I had a couple of deep cycle batteries in there solar charge controller and inverter and also had some additional shelving for storage and then here you can see the water tank so this is a 30 gallon water tank and that would last me about a week and i'd basically haul water and fill that tank outside um, there's a pipe connects to this tank and allowed me to fill the tank from the outside so basically i would have the tank of water and it would gravity feed into a bucket. I could fill the bucket and either heat it on the wood stove or I could heat it on my little propane burner here if it was summertime and I wasn't using the wood stove. I'd have my little burner here and I could heat the water for that. So I'd heat up about two gallons of water and <clears throat> basically fill this jug. So these are the basic Walmart blue jugs that have the uh, adjustable spigot on here. I put a hole in the top so I could just fill it from the top very easily. So once it was full, then I could take the jug and put it up here on the shelf. And basically have a nice hot shower. 
so you could just operate the spigot and have gravity feed and gravity drain out. So I really didn't have much of a drain at all. There's very little water coming out of the shower, a couple of gallons a day. So basically yeah, I had a, a gravel um, trench right here under the cabin and it would just absorb that water right into the ground. So it worked really well. Um, Again, indoor showers, that's that's one luxury that's a must-have if you're going to live off-grid um, <laughs> for any length of time. So another nice thing about this curtain, of course I would keep it in this position most of the time, but if you want you could pin it in this position and have a little bit of privacy if you actually had a guest over. If you're thinking about going off totally off grid and living in a tiny cabin debt free, definitely something that's doable, um, especially for one person I think for a cabin this size. I actually quite enjoyed living in this cabin for four years and uh, being debt free and basically having a pretty simple life. But it also was a, a really good stepping stone for getting this piece of property and being able to build our house that we now live in. So um, yeah, it's not a bad way to go. Um, nice thing about Montana is I really didn't have any trouble with permitting or building codes or regulations, things like that. Uh, of course, other parts of the country those kinds of things are going to be more of a consideration. But anyway, that's the end of the tour today. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see you next time.